This is fun. But it needs an upgrade. Who is the one to do it other than the best programmer that has ever lived? Let's start by making a new vehicle template project. Give it a name. I will call it Chase HQ. Then open the project. Wait for it to load. Play the project. The car drives well, but I will not use it. I will delete everything. And crashed! It won't be Unreal Engine without crashing at least once. Now let's make the essential blueprints, like the vehicle pawn, game mode, player controller, and input mapping. Make the input mapping context blueprint. Then make the input action blueprint for each button you want to set up. Then in the input mapping context, assign the input action to the desired keyboard button after making the basic inputs for the vehicle. Let's configure our project settings and set the main map and game mode. Also configure the game mode blueprint and set the player controller and the default pawn to be the vehicle pawn that I made. And continue the cleanup and delete all the remaining files of the old project to avoid mixing them up with my blueprints. And don't forget to update redirector references after deleting or moving anything. And crashed again! Don't worry, getting crashes is the norm with Unreal Engine, so don't forget to save your project frequently. Now clean up the mess that was caused by deleting the assets and organize the project files before it gets ugly soon. Now we start setting up the input mapping context blueprint and assign the input action we made previously to the desired keyboard button. After finishing the input mapping context, don't forget to reference it in the player controller on Begin Play by calling the Add Mapping Context node and choosing the mapping context you made. We need vehicles in our game, so we get the vehicle variety packs because they are free. I will try to stick to free assets in this game. Now let's set up the vehicle blueprint. I will set up the SUV first. First, we need to set up the physics asset and set up the mesh collision shape. Then we set up the animation blueprint and set the wheel handler node to allow the wheel animations. Then we add a spring arm and make it use pawn control rotation. Attach a camera to the spring arm and set its location to your desired values. Then make the wheel blueprint, one for the front wheel and one for the rear wheel and set the radius and other properties. And assign the wheels to the vehicle component. Don't forget to make the vehicle mesh, simulate physics, and in the physics asset, make generation hit result on simulation to true. Continue setting up the vehicle blueprint and add the inputs to the blueprint. Tweak the wheel properties like traction, slipping, and skidding in the wheel blueprint until you are satisfied with the result. After increasing the vehicle mass, Increase the spring rate and the preload in the wheel blueprint to make the vehicle handle normally. Now set the sports car and make its wheel blueprint and make the vehicle lighter, increase the engine torque and tweak the wheel slip and skid properties to give it more grip. Now we start making engine sounds and change its pitch and volume according to the engine RPM. We achieve this by making a float parameter in the sound queue and changing this parameter value on the tick by using the set float parameter node.
Now let's make the tire skidding and slipping sound effects. Start by getting the wheel state, brake it, and use its parameters. First, add a sound cue to the vehicle blueprint, one for the skidding and one for the slipping sound. Set the volume multiplier to zero. And when the car is skidding or slipping, activate the sound and set its volume and pitch according to the slipping or skidding magnitude. We use the skid and slip location to set the sound cue location. And when the vehicle speed is zero, we set the volume multiplier to zero so that the skidding or slipping sound is only active on vehicle movement. For the skidding and slipping FX, we spawn a Smoke Niagara system at the skid or slip location. I got a Smoke Niagara system from the Vigilante content. Just make sure to decrease the spawn rate and the lifespan of the Niagara system to avoid poor performance because it is running on the tick. And for the hit sound effects, I used generic hit sounds and added them to a sound cue, then used the random node to get a different sound every time the vehicle hit something. Then go for the vehicle mesh and use the on event hit. But make sure that the physics asset has the simulation, generates hit events that must be true. Then spawn the hit sound on mesh hit. Just add a concurrency setting to avoid spawning too many sounds. Also spawn decal attached to the hit normal of the skid or slip location. Now for the AI system. We first start by preparing our AI controller blueprint, behavior tree, and blackboard. And in the AI controller, on begin play, use the node run behavior tree and select our behavior tree. It will be a mix between following a spline and avoiding obstacles using line trace. Let's start with the spline component. In the vehicle, add a spline actor variable and make an instance editable to be able to assign a spline on playing the game. First, we get the closest location to a world location. Then we find the distance on the spline at that location. Then we add a float value, which represents the view range of the vehicle. Then we find the location at the new distance on the spline. Then we use find, look at rotation. After that, we use the delta rotation node to get the rotation in relation to our pawn rotation. Then we get the yaw value from the delta rotation and this will be our steering input. Also, by using the steering input, we calculate the throttle and brake. Simply when the yaw is high, it means we should brake and decrease throttle because we have a corner ahead. And to avoid obstacles, I made a system that involves multiple line traces around the vehicle which detects objects, applies the brakes, and slows the vehicle based on the distance to the obstacle. The closer the vehicle, the more braking it applies and steers the vehicle away from the obstacle depending on the location of the object. Now for the map. I chose the default open world map. It is nice and big and has everything set up for me. For the landscape material, I used material from Rural Australia Assets and the trees and foliage from this package. 
For the road mesh, I got a road package that I bought from the marketplace. I know I said free assets, but it is a good asset, and I bought it a long time ago at huge discounts. You can use Mega Scans instead, they have great road meshes. I use the landscape spline system to make the roads. It is very good. It deforms the landscape with the road and makes it look great. First, add a landscape layer and reserve it for the road spline mesh. I made the road twisty and with parts going up the mountains for variation in the gameplay. Then, I started cleaning the road mesh from the foliage that was sticking out of the road by painting the layer that does not have foliage in it over the road spline mesh. I got the path blueprint that I made before and made it stick to the road by using line traces from the spline points to set the spline points location to the ground. After I completed the spline path for the enemy AI vehicle, then I started to make the other spline paths for the NPC vehicles, one for each movement direction. After finishing the paths, I assigned every NPC with its path spline. For the damage and death of the NPCs, I made a health system and decreased the health on hit by anything. The force of impact is calculated by multiplying the mass of the vehicle by the speed of it and dividing the result by a big number I chose 7,500. The reason for dividing the result is that you get a big number and the health is capped at 250, so you will get a reasonable number to subtract from the health. When the health reaches zero, the AI will be detached from the controller to stop the vehicle movement, also apply the brake, and set the throttle to zero, because if the vehicle dies when it is moving, it will keep moving and won't stop. Then activate the Fire Niagara system, which I got from the Vigilante assets. You see the game is beginning to take shape, and we have little things here and there to complete, to be able to say that we have a game. For the UI, we need a health bar for the player and the AI, which becomes visible when we get within a certain radius. First, we make a user widget blueprint, which will be the main widget blueprint, and will contain the health bar, game timer, and the vehicle speed counter. For the health bar, we use a progress bar and provide a value between 0 and 1 to fill the bar. We get the value by dividing the current health by the full health, then we update the widget every time the use changed. For the game timer, we set a timer by event which will fire every second and decrease the timer until it reaches zero, and the game will stop and show the game over widget. The timer will increase by a certain amount when you catch up with the enemy vehicle. The speed counter is easy. Just bind the widget text to the vehicle speed in miles per hour. We are approaching the end, and we gradually see our game taking shape. Here we will finish the remaining menus like the Choose Vehicle menu, the Main menu, the Pause menu, the Game Over menu, and the Winning menu. For choosing the Vehicle menu, start by making a small level to show the vehicle that we want to choose. Then make the widget, and add buttons for the next and back to cycle between vehicles. I made a structure that contains two arrays, one for the player vehicles, and the other for the AI vehicles. Then I made an integer that is increased when clicking next and decreased when clicking back. And this integer is transferred to the game mode to spawn the chosen vehicle in the choose vehicle map. Then the same integer is saved in the game instance to pass it to the main level game mode and change the default pawn according to the chosen vehicle class on the construction script. And for the AI, it is spawned randomly from the AI vehicle array. For the start menu, make another level and make a new widget blueprint. Add three buttons, start, options, and quit. On clicking start, open the main level. On clicking quit, you call the quit game node. And for options, I will leave it empty. For the pause menu, make an input action and make it a bool type and assign the escape key to it in the input context. And on pressing the escape button, you pause the game by using set game paused and show the mouse cursor. 
Then spawn the pause widget, which has three buttons, Resume, Options, and Quit. Resume will unpause the game and remove the widget from the screen. This is what I could achieve in five days. And I am proud of myself because this is the first project I have finished and did not leave it half the way. Please like share and subscribe to see more videos like this. Tell me in the comments if you want me to complete this game and make it worthy to be the successor to Chase HQ.